The Medical Practitioners Tribunal Service held a hearing for Dr. V. Kass, who was convicted of doing acts tending and intended to pervert the course of public justice. The hearing was held in public and the tribunal had in mind the statutory overarching objective of protecting, promoting and maintaining the health, safety and well-being of the public, promoting and maintaining public confidence in the medical profession and promoting and maintaining proper professional standards and conduct for members of that profession. Dr. V. Kass was a fully trained consultant vascular surgeon in Hungary and had moved to the UK in 2006. Dr. V. Kass was captured on a speed camera driving at 89 miles per hour in a 70 miles per hour limit on the A30 at Dunhevard, Cornwall on May 15, 2018. He was sent a notice of intended prosecution from the safety camera unit in Cornwall, which he completed and returned, nominating a Hungarian male referred as Mr. D as the driver at the time of the offence. However, when a notice of intended prosecution was sent to the address provided in Hungary, Mr. D could not be traced. Dr. V. Kass was then contacted again, and this time provided an address for Mr. D in Canada, but that NOIP was also returned. On July 3, 2018, Dr. V. Kass sent a completed NOIP and accompanying letter claiming again that Mr. D was the driver. On July 9, 2018, the safety camera unit wrote to Dr. V. Kass, stating that he had failed to provide the correct address details for the driver at the time of the offence, and that proceedings would be taken against him for the offence. On October 8, 2018, PC a contacted Dr. V. Kass through his mobile number and emailed him a photo of the driver at the time of the offence, which PC a believed resembled Dr. V. Kass. PC a conducted further research and investigations and found that on the day of the offence, Dr. V. Kass had been scheduled to work at the Royal Cornwall Hospitals Trust located in Truro, Cornwall. Dr. V. Kass was interviewed under caution at a police station in Birmingham and was accompanied by a solicitor. During the interview, Dr. V. Kass maintained that he had lent his vehicle and mobile phone to Mr. D at the time of the offence, and the image of the driver was Mr. D. He pleaded guilty on May 3, 2019 and was sentenced to three months' imprisonment suspended for 12 months, a fine of £2,000, costs of £300, and a victim surcharge of £115. The certificate of conviction was admitted in GMC proceedings as conclusive evidence of the offence committed. It was also alleged that Dr. V. Kass failed to notify the GMC without delay that he had been charged and convicted of the offence. The tribunal has to determine whether Dr. V. Kass's fitness to practice is impaired by reason of his conviction and misconduct. The GMC presented evidence in the form of witness statements and documentary evidence. The GMC's counsel submitted that Dr. V. Kass's fitness to practice is currently impaired by reason of his misconduct and conviction. They stated that Dr. V. Kass's delay in notifying the GMC of his charges and conviction has a serious effect on the regulator's ability to properly investigate the matter, and can potentially appear to the public that the GMC does not take its role seriously. Dr. V. Kass's counsel submitted that Dr. V. Kass accepted that the matters raised in the allegations are serious and justify a finding of misconduct, but argued that his fitness to practice is not currently impaired by reason of his misconduct. The defense added that Dr. V. Kass accepts that his fitness to practice is currently impaired by reason of his conviction. The tribunal went on to determine if Dr. V. Kass's fitness to practice is impaired by reason of his conviction and misconduct. Dr. V. Kass admitted to the conviction and sentence of doing acts tending and intended to pervert the course of justice, and his failure to notify the GMC without delay of being charged and convicted for that offense. The tribunal used a two-stage process to determine the impairment, First, whether the facts found in Dr. V. Kass's failure to notify amount to misconduct and that the misconduct was serious, and second, if the misconduct was serious, whether it leads to a finding of impairment. The tribunal also considered if Dr. V. Kass's fitness to practice is impaired the day of hearing, taking into account his conduct at the time of the events and any relevant factors since then such as whether the matters are remediable, have been remedied and any likelihood of repetition. The tribunal considered whether the facts of Dr. V. Kass's failure to notify the GMC of a criminal conviction amounted to misconduct. They determined that misconduct is considered seriously deficient conduct that other professionals would regard as deplorable. Dr. V. Kass failed to notify the GMC of his conviction until five months after pleading guilty, despite having been advised to do so by the GMC's published guidelines. Dr. V. Kass admitted that his failure to notify the GMC was serious misconduct and offered no explanation other than receiving advice from friends. The tribunal found that Dr. V. Kass's behavior was unacceptable to both the public and members of the medical profession and determined that his actions amounted to serious misconduct. The tribunal considered whether Dr. V. Kass's fitness to practice is currently impaired due to his misconduct in not informing the GMC of his criminal conviction in a timely manner. 
They used the test outlined in the case of CHREV NMC and Paula Grant and determined that Dr. Vikas's actions have brought the medical profession into disrepute and breached a fundamental tenet of the profession. They considered Dr. Vikas's past actions, explanations for his misconduct, steps taken for remediation, insight, likelihood of repetition, and the absence of risk of harm to patients. They noted that Dr. V. Kass has taken steps to remedy the situation such as attending a course on probity and medical ethics and giving seminars to colleagues, but these were taken only a year after his court appearance and more than six months after the GMC's investigation opened. The tribunal concluded that Dr. V. Kass's fitness to practice is currently impaired because of his misconduct. The tribunal determined that Dr. V. Kass's fitness to practice is impaired by reason of conviction. The tribunal considered the need to uphold proper professional standards and public confidence and determined that a finding of impairment was necessary due to the seriousness of the conviction. The tribunal considered the evidence, submissions and its findings of misconduct and impaired fitness to practice in order to decide the appropriate sanction to impose. The tribunal kept in mind its objective of protecting the public and maintaining public confidence in the medical profession. The tribunal also reminded itself that the purpose of disciplinary proceedings is not to punish the doctor a second time for the same offense but to protect the public and maintain professional standards. The decision on the appropriate sanction is a matter for the tribunal alone to exercise its own judgment. Counsel, on behalf of the GMC, submitted that the appropriate sanction for Dr. V. Kass's misconduct and conviction of perverting the course of public justice and lying to the police is erasure. She stated that Dr. V. Kass's actions were serious and persistent, and that he did not take any actions to address the issues that led to his misconduct. The counsel argued that taking no action or imposing conditions would not adequately address the concerns raised and the gravity of his misconduct, and that suspension would also be insufficient. She stated that erasure is necessary to maintain public confidence in the profession and to send a clear message to the profession. Counsel, on behalf of Dr. V. Kass, submitted that the charges admitted and found proved are serious but Dr. V. Kass engaged in this behavior only because of his financial difficulties and he has taken steps to address the issues that led to his misconduct. He stated that Dr. V. Kass has shown remorse and has begun a process of remediation and insight, including reflective writing, cooperating with the trust disciplinary hearing, and educating others through a presentation on honesty and public confidence. He argued that a short period of suspension or conditions would be more appropriate, as it would allow Dr. V. Kass to continue his work of remediation and not remove a good doctor from the community they are serving. Erasure is seen as disproportionate and would fail to recognize the significant work Dr. V. Kass is doing. The tribunal considered that taking no action would not be appropriate in this case. The tribunal was of the view that conditions will also be not workable. In considering suspension, the tribunal asked itself, as foreshadowed in paragraph 92 of the SG, whether Dr. V. Kass's conduct in 2018, his conviction in May 2019 and his failure to report matters to the GMC until October 2019 are fundamentally incompatible with continued registration, and that he should not practice again to protect the reputation of the profession. This is the key question in this case. The tribunal concluded that a suspension of 12 months with a review is necessary and proportionate response to uphold the tripartite objective. The tribunal also decided to impose an immediate order on Dr. V. Kass's registration in order to protect public confidence in the profession and maintain the reputation of the profession. The tribunal considered the interests of Dr. V. Kass and the public and determined that the public confidence would be undermined if it did not impose an immediate order and that it was necessary and proportionate to do so.